Welcome back, gang. So now that we have a functional um, form for the post, I want to extract this into its own component because this form we're also going to be using on our profile page. So I want to make it dyna as dynamic as possible. Okay, so let's go to our dashboard page. And then here, we're just going to cut this out. And then in the components folder, post comment, we're going to create a new one and we're going to call it post uh, form dot view. Okay, so then we'll add in our template. We'll paste that form in. Uh, let me move this up. And we'll come back to this in a second. So now here we can add post form. Okay, we need to import it. We can put it under here. We can actually copy this one. Uh, copy paste. Bring it down. And here we'll write post form. Okay, and same thing with this, uh, copy paste, post form. Okay, so now we need to change some things in here. We need to bring in um, what the things that we had for this one, for the form that was in here. So the first thing is we're going to type in method, and the method is going to equal our submit method from uh, down here. Okay, so we're going to put that in and we're also going to put in uh, the form. Okay, so now we want to accept those props in here. Down here we can add our script tags. And we're going to add the props in here. So the first one is going to be method. And the next one is going to be form. So now up here for the, um, the form method, we can just put method. And we can leave the rest the same. OK, so now we also need to bring in these. Um, these uh, props that we're using, these components, the input error, the blue button, and the fingerprint. So we can go here. We can actually just copy them right out of here. Um, so this is going to be the first one, and the next one is going to be the error. Copy, or actually we can just cut it out. Come back to post form, go down to the script tags, paste that in. Bring that up, and then we can just copy the component section and take out what we don't need. So, copy, and we're going to get rid of this one, this one, and this one. Okay, so here we'll just add it in, comma, and now we can get rid of this one. We can get rid of these two. Okay, and one more thing I want to do is I want to change this text so that when um, we do make it dynamic, we can just change the text right through the link to the, the import. Okay, so here we can just do text equals, and for this page, we're just going to put post. Or we need to put single quotes around that. To post form and now here we can just change this to text and then we need to bring that in as a prop okay so let that compile go to our page and if we did everything correctly this should look the same
Okay, great. And it does. So now the next thing I want to do is these posts that belong to the authenticated user, I want to, or any post actually, I just want us to go ahead and be able to delete. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and create a new route. Or web routes. Okay. And under this one, we're going to make this a uh, delete. And we're going to use root model bindings. So we'll add post to here. Okay. And this method, oh, this one and this one is now going to be destroy. So let's open up the profile controller and head down to that uh, destroy method. Oh, sorry, the post controller. Okay, head down to that method. And as you can see, we already have the post, um, the post variable in there. So now we can just do uh, post delete and then we'll just return back. Okay. Um, cool. So let's go ahead into the um, post item and start working on that. We don't need um, this anymore. We don't need this anymore. Uh, we don't need profile controller, but we'll keep profile, I mean post controller open. Okay, and this one we're done in here as well. I'll close that. So now we need to go ahead and create the some buttons in here. Okay, so under the H2 tag, we're gonna open up a div um, and we're gonna make it the class is going to be relative. Okay. And the first thing that we're going to do is add a button. Okay. And in this button, we're going to use a new icon, which I'm just going to paste it here, but we've already, I've already added it in the icon file. I've added two of them, the ellipsis and the trash. And if you're not sure how to use them, then you can go back to, I think it's in one of the friends, um, in one of the friends videos that we have that we added the SVG icons. Okay, so I'll close that. And then um, what I want to do is I want to create some functionality in here where when we click on the button, it's going to open the, um, it's going to open another link that is to delete the post. Okay, so we're going to make this a type of button and it's going to have a class of focus outline um, none. Okay, and then we're going to have at click open menu, we'll create this in a second, equals don't open the menu. Okay. And now under here, uh, I'll just add a div for now. And in that we'll just put uh, I'm open. And then we'll put a VF um, open menu just so we can test it out and see that it's working properly. So we'll come down to our script tags. We'll add a data property or function. Open that up, turn, and then uh, open menu. And we're going to set that initially to false. Okay, so that's compiled down. Let's go back to our browser. Refresh. Okay, so that's the new icon we just put in. Once we click that, I'm open. Okay. So now let's go back and get that working correctly.
So now if we scroll back up, um, this div, we need to add some classes to it. And I'm just going to paste these in because it's a lot. Um, okay, and it's just giving it some background. Um, we're just adding hover state, rounded, shadow, just basic um, styling. And um, as I said before, and I always say I'm going to post this code up to GitHub so you can take a closer look at that. Okay, um, and in the div, we're going to have a form. Uh, we don't need the action. We'll open that up. And we're going to have another button. Um, and we're going to have delete post. Why don't we make that two words? Okay, so button type submit. And then um, the class, I'm just going to paste some of these. I want to add the last icon that we brought in today. And this is a trash icon. Okay, so let's just make sure that we can see this. Okay, so refresh. Open that up. And now we have our hover state, we have our icon. And that's good. So now we can go in and add the form. Okay, so in the opening form tag, we're going to have at, at submit, uh, and the method will call it delete post. And we also want to add dot prevent to this. Okay, so we'll scroll down, and then we're going to have uh, delete form and this is going to be this inertia form open that and then we're going to call this user post and it's going to be referencing this post okay so now we need to add our method so right under data, comma, methods, open that up, delete post, okay, and then the first thing we'll need to do is when we click on delete post, we need to close the open menu that we have opened up here. So we need to do the reverse of that equals false and then this delete form and that's what it's named up here and again we're going to have other forms in here so we need to specify which one is which so delete um, this route posts destroy and then we need to pass in the post okay open these up and let me move this up a bit it's going to be preserve scroll is true and then on success an anonymous function open that and then um, we can go ahead and add a toast. Okay, toast fire. Since we already made them, we might as well use them. Um, the icon will be success. And I forgot to add a comma up here. Okay, and then the title will say post has successfully been deleted okay so now let's go ahead and give this a try we'll refresh okay delete post and now that one's gone and we got our toast message okay cool okay so now you may have noticed that we were able to delete a post that did not belong to us and we should not be able to do that on this page.
Okay, so what I want to do is add um, a few things to help us not have that problem. Okay, so let's go back to our code. And when we delete a post, the first thing we're going to do is we're also going to add this bit of code. Okay, and this is just going to be um, when it shoots an error, it's going to display this. You do not have permission to delete this post. Okay, so that's the first thing that we're going to do. So now the next thing we need to do is head over to our controller and we need to put some checks into this destroy method. Okay, now when we do these, we want to go with, or the way that I like to do it is with the most wrong thing that could happen, we want to just increasingly get to the positive, if that makes any sense. So the first one, I'm just going to paste this in real quick. Okay, so this one is, is saying if the auth user ID does not equal the post that we have coming in, the post user ID, and not auth user is friends with the post user ID. Now this is friends with, we're actually getting from um, our friendable trait, which I won't go into now, but if you want to take a look, you can head over to the videos that we have setting up the friends and you'll see that method in there. Okay, um, so it's basically checking for that. Essentially, we just want it to really just throw an error so that we can display the error through our toast notification here. Okay, um, so that's what that's saying. This should never, this should never be an occurrence. Like you should never get to the, you should never have random users on your dashboard because it's only supposed to be yours and your friends anyway. Okay, so that should never happen. So again, the furthest, the most wrongest, which is probably not the right word, but the most wrong um, um, thing that could possibly happen is the first one that we want to put. Okay, so now the next one is going to be if the auth user ID does not equal the post user ID and the auth user ID does not equal the post parent ID. Meaning, if let's say it is a friend who um, has this post, but we are not the parent ID, it has nothing to do with us, it's just the post that the user, our friend has posted, then we will throw an error. We do not have permission to delete this post. Okay, so that's, that's what that check is. Okay, the next one is going to be... If the auth user ID does not equal the post user ID and the auth user ID equals the post parent ID, then we can delete the post and then we can return back. Okay. So, yeah. So now we can delete it even though we're not the, we're not the ones who wrote the post, but it was written for us by our friend because we have the parent ID. Okay. And so the last check is just going to replace the one that we have, right? Well, this isn't actually a check, but we're going to fix this. So now if the auth user ID equals the post user ID, which means it's our post, we didn't post it on any friend's post or anything. This is just our post. Um, then we can delete the post and then return back. Okay, so now let's try this and see if it works. So we'll go ahead and refresh the page. Okay, so now this person is our friend. Okay, this is on our dashboard, but it's a collection of the our friend's posts and our posts. So now we're going to go ahead and try to delete this post. And we cannot, you do not have permission to delete this post. Fantastic. So now we'll go down to one of ours. Okay. So Gennaro Stark. And then we'll go ahead, click delete. And great. Post has successfully been deleted. Okay. Fantastic. Now, the very last thing that I want to do is, or for today, is um, I want to add a group of users. Um, we'll take five random users that are not the authenticated user and we want to list them here 
and these are just going to be five random suggestions so that you can click on it maybe you want to be their friend or whatever you you know you might you'll be able to click their their uh their link so let's go ahead and start working on that okay uh we can close this up this up and we can just close these for now let's go to the dashboard controller okay and here we're just first going to set up a variable called suggestions and it's going to be user where id does not equal the auth id okay and then we'll add another condition we can bring it down here or where in id equals auth user friends ids okay and once again this is from our friendable trait okay um and then we can just let's say take five and this is just a laravel um a laravel a little laravel helper to help you grab just five users okay and then we want to put it in random order okay and then the last thing we'll just add get okay so we shouldn't have any errors but we do need to import this user okay so now we can send this to the dashboard page so we'll just call it suggestions equals suggestions okay and now let's go to the dashboard page and we will go ahead and accept that as a prop now let's refresh and make sure that we can see that in the props so we'll open up our inspection tools we'll refresh okay and then we'll click dashboard okay and here are our suggestions let's open that up and as you can see we've got everything we need in here okay so let's close that up and now um let's go back to our text editor and this variable in here this is a lot of code unnecessary for the controller we can actually extract this into another scope method or a couple of scope methods so we're going to go to the user model okay we're going to make this into two so we can go under default profiles and the first one is going to check for well, i should probably grab these just grab this bring it over and then we can play around with it in here okay um in fact let me uh comment these out so we can see if we have a real error or not okay so the first one public function scope and we're gonna check for whether or not a user is authenticated okay um, and the reason I'm doing that is because we uh, are gonna be using this scope for something else later on okay so now we can put a return this where and then we can just grab this okay and add that to here 
Okay, so that's one. The second one is going to be for the other stuff. So public function scope suggestions. And we'll open this up. Now the cool thing about these scopes is that you can use one scope inside of another scope. So how we would do that, we'll add a query in here. And then we'll return. Uh, let me pull this down so we can get a better look at the other method. So return query. And this is going to be the query, not auth. Okay? It's going to be not auth. Okay? And then we can add the rest of what we were looking for, uh, which is this stuff right here. Copy. Ooh. Copy. And then we'll add that up here. Not auth or we're in ID does not equal the auth user friends IDs and semicolon. Okay. So now we got everything in there. And now we can use this suggestions in the controller. Now this is going to turn into, um, let's see, how can we do this? User, we can get rid of all of this. And now just have suggestions. Take five in random order, get. Okay, so now let's refresh and make sure that we didn't break anything. So we'll refresh, inspect, and then we should still get the same suggestions that we had before. Okay, and we do. Fantastic. That's all the information. Same stuff. Great. Okay, now the other thing we can do is instead of having the, um, the variable up here we can just grab this and add it to here and that'll get rid of another line for us okay so delete that suggestions and we'll go ahead and refresh just to be sure and there we go still have our suggestions okay so now let's go ahead and bring this to the front of our app Okay, so now we can close this and this. Okay, and what I want to do is uh, I want to create another component. Okay, so we'll close that up. We'll come in here, and then this one will be called um, suggestion block view okay um, so we'll put our template and then we'll put our JavaScript okay and we'll come back to this in a second so under the form I want to put suggestion block and we we need to import it. So we'll import it down here. So import suggestion block from at components um, suggestion block. Okay. Then we need to add it to our list. Okay. Um, the other thing is we need to pass in the suggestions to the component. So we'll bring them up here. Suggestions equals suggestions. Okay. So now in here, we need to add props. Suggestions. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and copy 
and paste a bit of code in here. Uh, it's not much, but it's basically a v4 loop. So v for user and suggestions, and then there's a key of user ID, and then we have an inertia link which has it's going to go to the user profile page. Okay, so we also have the image in here, and there's also a title. So when you hover over this, what this does is when you hover over the image, you'll see their username. Okay, so let's refresh it and make sure that that is coming through. So refresh. Okay, where's our images? Oh, okay. This needs to be suggestions. Okay, so let's try this again, make sure that compiles down. Okay, and then we'll refresh. Close this. And there we go. And now see if you hover over it, you'll see the usernames and this will take you to their profile page. Okay, so fantastic. I'm going to leave it here for now. Uh, the next episode, we are going to be working in this area here. Okay, so we'll, we'll be putting the accurate time and work on the likes and, and the dislikes. Okay, so thanks for watching, guys. I will see you next time, and I'll make sure to push this code up to GitHub. Okay, thanks.